Hi guys and welcome back. I know it's been a minute since I've made a video, but I've been back at work, I've been hiking a lot, and life has been pretty good and pretty busy. So the inspiration for this video you're about to watch, I actually filmed yesterday and it came from an article I saw my friend post on Facebook called Eight Amazing Hikes Under Three Miles That You'll Absolutely Love or something like that. And seven out of the eight hikes I've never done before and they're just all over New Hampshire. So I wasn't gonna drive all the way across the state just to hike a 20 minute trail and then come back. So my genius idea was why don't I hike all eight in one day and <laughs> then I get to experience all these hikes and because I've heard of a lot of them I just haven't hiked them because I don't know they seemed short, they seemed touristy for whatever reason. I hiked all eight of these little mountains in one day. It involved over 300 miles of driving. So with all that said, I hope you enjoy all these hikes. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, June 25th at 6.30 in the morning, and I'm ready to start my crazy day of driving, <laughs> but more importantly, hiking. I'm gonna stop, get dunks, get gas, and let's get this day going. So now I'm at the parking lot for Pack Monognock. I got descriptions for each hike. It says Pack Monognock, not to be confused with Mount Monognock. The regular Mount Monognock's much bigger, so much more crowded. Um, but Mount Monognock, this or Pack Monognock. This smaller mountain in Peterborough can be climbed up and down in under three miles, depending on what trail you take. Yeah, I'm gonna pick a trail now and head up. So the trail I decided to take was the Marion Davis Trail. It looks like there's quite a few different trails up to the top, so this will probably be a loop. I'll take a different trail back down. These are funny. I've never seen a trail blazed with triangles before. I just saw some pretty big deer, and I think I've only seen deer on a trail once before. So that's cool. Maybe pack monotonock's good for wildlife watching. summit is bigger than I thought. There's like picnic tables and toilets and there's a fire tower. I got lucky today because there's a really clear view. Maybe if we zoom in we'd see some skyscrapers. They're there. Ooh, Boston. There we go. There's a really good view of Mount Monognock. The Mount Monognock. That's kind of cool that there's just a little opening and that's all you see. A little hut I didn't expect to see up here. And camping or fires are not permitted in this area. Yeah, maybe if you're looking for peace and quiet, this isn't the hike to do because the summit has a lot of construction vehicles up here right now. So I'm gonna go and take a different trail back down to the car. Huh. So I just noticed that on my way down. You're supposed to pay, but I didn't see anywhere to pay or no one working. So maybe it's the off season, maybe it's COVID. But I don't know, if you're planning to do this hike, I may look into that. As you can see, the trail isn't exactly smooth. 
if you do this hike, there's a lot of rocks that you have to navigate around. Back in the car, headed to Stoddard, New Hampshire to hike Pitcher Mountain. It is a 37 minute drive, so not too bad. I'll see you there. All right, I am in the parking lot of Pitcher Mountain. This parking lot is tiny. Um, I'm the third car here and you could probably fit six on my little sheet. What it says about Pitcher Mountain is the entire loop up and down is only 0.7 miles. It makes it one of the shortest up and down hikes. It's especially gorgeous when the wildflowers are blooming. So here we are. I'm gonna go up. You can see the fire tower from the road which is cool. I tried to get it on camera and let's do this. I think it only took me eight minutes to get up here. So that was cool. This is a really neat trail down. I kind of did this loop counterclockwise and the way up was a really easy road to walk up and then this trail going down is really narrow and very green so you kind of get the best of both worlds so doing the 0.7 down back to my car and then the next the next hike will be rattlesnake which is the hike i've done before so should be good already back at the parking lot I was up there for 18 minutes <laughs> and yep, that was pretty correct, 0.7 miles. I feel relieved that I got one of the last parking spaces here and there's a sign on the road that says illegal parking, a $50 fine, it's enforced. So glad I'm here. It is freaking busy. There are so many cars for such a short trail. This is gonna be a fast hike. I will show you the view. It's beautiful. You can see Squam Lake. This is my neck of the woods, so this is where I live, and I hope you enjoy it. That was funny. There was a car in the parking lot that had a New Hampshire sticker on it. I don't know who it was, but that specific New Hampshire sticker, the all capital letters, I haven't sold in about three years. So whoever bought that sticker is an OG New Hampshire fan. This trail is very well maintained and it's a very easy walk because they have these built in steps for most of the way up. I'm leaving the summit now. Took me about seven, 16, 17 minutes to get up here, but I was hiking fast and this place isn't new to me. So I didn't feel like I had to spend a lot of time up there. I just got some good shots at the summit. 
It's beautiful. Um, I saw some snakes on Rattlesnake, which is pretty cool. But I passed a lot of families on the trail. Um, very kid friendly, very dog friendly. And let's go back down. If you do have $5 to spare, you can always donate. It's not mandatory, but it's a nice thing to do. Back in the parking lot. Not complaining, just merely an observation, but 11 out of the 18 cars in the parking lot right now are from Massachusetts. So very touristy mountain, if that doesn't tell you. And I forgot to mention before I hiked, the little description for West Rattlesnake Mountain, a two mile hike, that will reward you with absolutely stunning views of Squam Lake. So they were stunning. I hope you enjoyed that. On to the next hike, which is the Flume Trail in Franconia. And I got, got my ticket. So hopefully I'm not too late. Hopefully they still honor this because it says it's for one o'clock, but it's almost one right now. So let's go. I need the AC. I am at the Flume Trail in Franconia Notch State Park. It's a 1.8 mile loop to see the Flume Gorge waterfall. I've seen a lot of pictures of this because it's really popular for visitors to this area and it just seems like a walking tour on like wooden bridges and so I'm gonna go in. It's almost two o'clock, my ticket's for one. So let's see, I'm gonna wear a mask because I think they're strict here. So let's go. taking the social distancing really strict everything's like one way everyone's wearing masks it's a lot of people here I saw the Flume Gorge, <laughs> saw all the attractions that this little walk takes you by, and now I'm just finishing up the loop back to the car. Another observation in my little row of cars in this parking lot, there were 22 cars and only four were from New Hampshire. So this is even more touristy than the last place. I liked how scenic it was. There was a lot of cool waterfalls, as you obviously have seen, but I didn't like the amount of crying, screaming kids and Bluetooth speakers and families that took up the entire walkway and didn't let me pass and it's not aimed to people who like to hike it's aimed for families on vacation and people that maybe don't like to hike but still want to get out in the woods and see some things so i'm glad i did it <laughs> i've always wondered about this place it was really cool it just gave me a little bit of anxiety being in there so 
four hikes down. I am officially halfway through the list. The next one is Ripley Falls in Crawford Notch State Park. I'll show you on the map how far I've come. So this was my first hike of the day. That was Pakmanognok. That was the second, Pitcher Mountain. That was the third, that was Rattlesnake. And now I'm here. So I kind of feel like I'm in the home stretch. I don't have that much driving left to do. And let's crank these last four out. <laughs> and it was pretty nice that the end of the little walking tour put you right through a gift shop. So I was able to get some nice cold drinks. All right, here I am at the Ethan Pond Trailhead. This is where I will find Ripley Falls. Should be about, I don't know, a mile hike out and back. I had absolutely no idea that this was gonna be part of the AT. This trail does definitely has a lot of butterflies. So you can see one right there. See a couple right there. All right, so I'm walking back to the car now. That was a good hike. I give the waterfall a 10 out of 10. I give the trail to get there like a four out of 10. It's not very fun to walk on. All right, here I am in the Diana's bath parking lot. Um, the last parking lot I was at when I was done with Ripley Falls, I saw a couple hikers that were doing the AT from Vermont to Maine and I gave them a ride into town because I'm always happy to provide some trail magic. This hike, Diana's Baths, it's a 1.3 mile loop popular for its gorgeous creek bed and waterfall views. Alright, so I'm sure you can see by the videos what Diana's baths were all about, but I guess it's just a good place to get your feet in the water. And this trail is like the smoothest trail I've seen all day, so it's really easy to walk on. So I'm just ending this hike. I'm almost at the parking lot. This is number six out of eight. I only have two more and they seem pretty close, so I'm excited. We have the Black Cap Trail, 2.5 miles. Oof. 16 minutes away. It's not too bad. So the ride, the road up here was kind of sporty. It was really steep and narrow and windy. I can't imagine that being open the winter, but it's kind of cool to drive up. Ribbit. That is one incredible view, and it looks so pretty now that the sun is going down. Oof. I like this view of Mount Kears, North Kearsarge. I was up there a couple weeks ago. You can see the little tower at the top. I didn't realize that was the presidential range at first. Really neat. All right, this is the trail back down to the car. I'm leaving the summit now. I wish I could watch the sunset 
from here, but it might be a while. And I'm kind of eager to hit the last trail, get to McDonald's and head home. And that's so crazy. We're actually looking down on Cranmore Mountain. That's the summit of Cranmore, Ski Mountain. And I am, from what I know, the only person up here. Almost back to the car. My last stop of the day is going to be a trail that goes around Echo Lake. It is about four miles away. All right, I'm finally at the last hike of the day, Echo Lake. Number eight, Echo Lake. It's a 0.9 mile loop that will take you right along a lovely beach, hike it on a hot day, and jump in to cool off. All right, so you saw Echo Lake and this trail. It's literally just a trail that goes around it. There's a good sized beach on the other side. What I do really like about this trail is every so often there's a little entrance into the lake. So if you wanted to bring your dogs or go swimming and have a little privacy, you can probably find one of those and have it to yourself. That ledge is really cool to look at. I like that ledge. There are so many picnic tables. This beach would fit a lot of people. I am done. I can't believe I did eight hikes today. All right, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. That day was so fun to film and do. I love challenges like this. If you know of any other cool challenges in New Hampshire you want me to do, please comment below. I hope you enjoyed and make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I have some exciting video ideas for the future. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.